K-West coverage of preseason football continues on the campus of West LaCouise High School where the Wildcats are putting on the pads, the full pad for the first time this year for the 2019 season. Hello everybody, Carlos Roberto along with Mike Gonzalez and we are here on the practice field as we continue with our preseason coverage. We're going to be uh, having some interviews here. We're going to have some live look-ins to uh, practice and talk a little bit about the Wildcats. Let's go a little bit more in depth about what is going on. Mike, it was a little bit cloudy this morning. I know as a, as a football coach, as a journalist, whenever you're going to be outside, you always want to check the weather. It was cloudy, but now the sun's starting to creep out a little bit. Yeah, a few minutes right before we got on the air, uh, the sun peaked out a little bit and now <laughs> The sun is shining and the players are out here working now. They're starting their drills. They're excited. Yeah. The coaches are excited. I see everybody smiling and uh, let's get going. Yeah, there's the offensive line right there uh, working a little bit uh, underneath and we'll be talking about the offensive line. But uh, the summer workouts, you know, there's some key moments that we're always looking at uh, during preseason before the season starts. The first day of practice, the first day of pads, which is today. And then you also have that first scrimmage that takes place, that second scrimmage, and then that first game of the season. Those are always some key moments that take place uh, during the football season or before the football season. And today is a big one, Mike, because the intensity gets to pick up a little bit more because you're in full pads. Yeah, exactly, Carlos. And I mean, being that it's West Lico East and they're a physical team and they're about lifting weights and they're about that quote unquote out hitting your opponent. I could only imagine what this week was like for them just going through some basic drills and, and, the, and the hitting was limited. And I mean, so putting on these pads, I'm sure the players are excited and pumped and ready to get to work. Okay, so what we're gonna do today, we're going to uh, review the schedule. We'll take a look at some of the key players uh, on the offensive side of the ball, on the defensive side of the ball as well. Uh, we have some interviews also as well. And uh, we'll also have a live look in at seven on seven. So we'll get to take a look at the quarterbacks. You know, we talked a little bit about the quarterbacks and we'll go more in depth later on, but we'll get to see a little bit of seven on seven as you watch uh, some of the quarterback action going on right now. And we'll even take a look at the uh, top players in 31 6 -A. But right now, let's talk a little bit about the West Loco East Wildcats success, the East success that they have had over the past, what is it, 12 years? Because they've been in the playoffs 12 straight years, Mike, and it started, uh, you know, way back, what was it, 2007 for West Loco East, uh, 12 win, uh, playoff um, the qualifications in a row. They've been in the third round of the playoffs five times, six by district titles, five area titles, and three district championships, Mike. So certainly this is a team, you know, that has a lot of winning tradition and that winning spirit. Yeah, no doubt about that, Carlos. And I mean, this is a, a school that opened up in, uh, in 2002 as far as playing in UIL uh, varsity competition, had to build from the ground up and then they finally got it going in 2007. And it's been an unbelievable run. Uh, still has a 4A school, winning numerous district championships, going to the third round. Uh, winning playoff games and what makes this unbelievable Carlos and, and, and remarkable is that when they get into the playoffs it doesn't stop there they make long deep runs and I mean and, and that right there tells you the kind of work they put in the kind of the coaches they have the players they've developed and I mean it's been unbelievable and so a lot of credit has to go to the to the district and to the to the coaching staff, to the all the, co the coordinators and the players Absolutely. to put all this together to make it work. And they have a formula and they have an identity and it's worked. Yeah, Coach Guer uh, started the program uh, back in the day when the Wildcats at West Lacoise was just opened. And uh, they were in the, what, the 4A level, then they moved up to the 5A level. Now that they're at the 6A level, Coach Burgett came in as an offensive coordinator back in the day. Yeah. And then when Coach Guer retired, uh, Coach Burgett took over the reins right. and Coach Guerra went to the playoffs a couple of times, did very, very well. And then Burgett kind of like took it to another level, you know, uh, doing very, very well running this type of offense. And he just loves to run the football. Yeah, no doubt about that, Carlos. And I mean, when you think about when all this started and I remember going to some of these games and I mean, you would just have like, you know, no more than 50 people on the stands and then you had the band there. So it was very difficult to get it going, but everybody has to start somewhere. Everybody has to start somewhere. And uh, that's what West Coast East did. And yes, they've been able to establish themselves as one of the premier programs here in the Rio Grande Valley and in deep South Texas, and even in the region here. And, uh, and as you mentioned, Carlos, uh, they've established themselves uh, uh, that running game, that physicalness. And uh, these are the kind of kids that love to hit, that love to work. Uh, they come from backgrounds where, they, where their parents work very, very hard. They want their kids to come to school, get a good education. And at the same time, for them to be out here on the football field and just hit somebody, to have a little fun to play football, that's what it's all about at West Lico East. And it's really, really worked. And I mean, I think the coaching staff uh, that they have here at West Lico East is, is a perfect, perfect uh, staff to have to work with these kind of kids 
and, and to make them work, to develop them as great people, strong students, and uh, once they leave West Louise, the goal is always for them to get a good, good education. Yeah, one of the players that uh, is going to be counted on, you know, because West Louise has always had a good running back. You saw him there in your picture there a little bit. Uh, they're running some passing drills right now, but which was number four, Ramsey Vasquez. Uh, he's getting ready to throw the football right now. He's right next to uh, one of the other uh, quarterbacks tossing the ball down the field. And uh, Ramsey Vasquez been with this team. Did he was he a, on this team as a freshman uh, or as a sophomore? But you know, right. I know that Ramsey Vasquez. It seems like he's been here forever. You know, uh, if, you, if you take a look at him and what he has done, uh, an outstanding football player on the defensive side of the ball, outstanding on the offensive side of the ball, and he's going to be key to that success. So let's hear from Ramsey Vasquez. Uh, Mike Gonzalez had a chance to talk to him earlier today uh, or earlier this week at practice. Let's hear from Ramsey Vasquez and Mike Gonzalez right now. Ramsey, um, you're going to take the reins at quarterback. Coach Brigitte's going to give you a pretty big responsibility. Just how do you feel about that? I feel great. You know, I've been working all summer for this and can't wait to get the season started. I know this past summer you guys had a two-week workout uh, with the new UIO rule. Talk to me about how, how that helped you out preparing for your quarterback uh, situation. Oh, everything just runs more smoother. I liked it this summer. Like we would get an extra day, you know, and when we come out here, we look a lot smoother and getting ready for this season. Coach Berget would like for you to take the at least 50% of the snaps on offense and probably 50% on defense. Are you ready to? play a full game on both sides of the ball. Yes, sir. I've been, I've been working all summer for this. I'm going to be as great a shape as I can be this on Fridays. I mean, you've been compared to Ciro Riojas, to JC Vargas, uh, now Ramsey Vasquez. Just how does that make you feel being compared to two West Coast legends? Uh, honestly, it's a good feeling, you know, uh, making like let, letting them know like how they feel about me, you know, like I'm I'm just here for the team, you know. I want to play football for the for the guys and do everything I can for a football team. And I'm just stoked that they named me like one of them, you know. As when I was growing up, you know, they were they were what I would look up to, of course. JC, man, JC helped me out because he was here the one year while I was here. So I mean, it was a good feeling. Yeah, so he's uh, definitely very uh, pumped up and ready for the football season. They're gonna count on him. He can play some quarterback, but uh, Coach Borghetti says, you know, if he's going to play at the next level, it'll be it'll be on the defensive side of the ball. So you got to believe he's going to be playing both ways a little bit this year, 50-50, yeah, right? No doubt about that, Carlos. So they're going to they're going to rely heavily on his athletic ability, and I mean, you can see uh, him working out with the offense right now. But we'll see him working out with the defense as well later on today. And um, he's a very, very important part of this team. I mean, he's pretty, he pretty much took over the role of Sio uh, Riojas from earlier in the decade and uh, J.C. Vargas a few years ago. And uh, he's come in and just had a great year last year. And then now this year, um, you know, the coach is going to expect him to kind of pick it up a little bit. Uh, I, I did ask Coach Berget uh, last week comparing him to J.C. and to Sio uh, Riojas, and he goes, well, this kid is probably a smarter than both of them, and so that really, really says a lot that, hey, we saw the great things JC did, we saw the great things that Ciro, Ciro Riojas did. I mean, this kid just kind of takes it up another level. Yeah, the football IQ of these football players has just really improved over the years, you know, uh, because of the internet, because of uh, the information that is out there, the huddle, they get to watch plays a little bit more than they did before, which they can do that from their from their phone, from their iPad, whatever. Whereas before, if you wanted to watch film, you had to go inside the field house. Right. Now it's right there at your fingertips, just like a, a YouTube on video, uh, video on YouTube. Now they have the huddle, which is basically the same thing for those of you guys don't, that don't know what the huddle is. But it's YouTube, but it's for, for players and for coaches to take a look at their plays, take a look at practices, and take a look at games. So right now we're taking a look at some seven-on-seven -seven action uh, for the West Laco East Wildcats. And you can see that uh, that is Ramsey Vasquez in at quarterback right now. And uh, just a little quick toss. It'll be that Geo get on the far side of the field. And one of the things about West Laco East, Mike, uh, is at the, in the early part, you know, they would, they would pass the ball uh, early, as, as far as Earlier, when Coach Coyad started the team, there was a, there was a little bit of balance, but they have really gone to more the running route. That is their bread and butter, but they will pass a lot more than they have maybe three or four years ago. Yeah, no doubt about that. I mean, we saw that with uh, Richard Lefever, a D1 prospect, uh, several years ago, where they kind of opened things up a little bit. And I mean, I think that's the question that Coach Burgett, uh answers every year: is Will you be throwing the football this year? And I mean, they've only had 
Richard Lefevre is the only quarterback in the system that's thrown over a thousand yards at West Lago East. And, but I mean, the capability is there. And I mean, they have the players to do it. But that, this is why uh, they work on it right now. They work on it during practice and then in the scrimmages. Coach Burgett sees uh, the kind of skill level that these players have and see if uh, that maybe that's something that they could do during their season. And so, yeah, expect the Wildcats to do some experimenting between now and say the regular season before district plays and see what he has. Okay, so that was Vasquez once again on the rollout to the left-hand side. And that was Randy Cardoza, uh, one of those key players that uh, we heard about him last year rolling out and made the nice catch to get a few yards. And then uh, they're not going live, you know, not a lot of tackling, not a lot of hitting that's going to take place today. It's the first day of full pads. And so you won't see that, but a nice catch there by Cardoza. So here we go, Vasquez once again on this uh, seven on seven matchup. No offensive line here. Quick pass to the outside, and there's Gio once again with the catch. And you see the quickness of Gio getting just a junior. Last year he was a sophomore, was Gio. And we're going to talk more in depth about him, but a good catch. And once again, this is the first uh, day of full pads. A little bit different now. You know you're going to get hit. You're not going to get hit fully like you are during the season, but you got to catch the ball now, not in shorts, but you know, with the pants on and the full pads and with the player on the defensive side of the ball right there in front of you. And, and you notice, Carlos, that it's very basic right now. They're not doing anything fancy. I mean, they're not throwing down the field just quite yet. They're going to start them off very slow. They're going to slowly sure. bring them in. Just don't do anything fancy yet. You just kind of get these players going a little bit, get them, get them into a certain rhythm as a practice unfolds here, and then maybe perhaps uh, later on, we'll see some throws down the field. So here we go, we got Vasquez once again. Ramsey in at quarterback. In, right next to him, we're in number 36, you'll see uh, Jacob Carrasco. And he'll roll to the right-hand side, looking to go a little bit deeper down the field. And that was to Ramsey Vasquez. That one a little bit short, good coverage there, also by the defense. You gotta remember, not only are you working the offense here, if you're Coach Burgett, which he's the, you know, he calls the plays, but you're also working on the defense. And so you're going to have Coach Guzman and you're going to have the other coaches as well that are going to be pushing their defense here to make sure you stop the offense. So yeah, we see that the coaching staff are actually standing right in front of us behind the secondary, keeping an eye on the players. Uh, Mike Gonzalez is there. Uh, I think, I'm not sure if that's Coach Pedraza, but and yeah, Goo's standing at the end zone right here. Good catch by Gio right there. Uh, no gloves. He. Uh, Likes to go without the gloves. You know, you see these kids, uh, all the receivers with those gloves. He goes barehanded, but a good catch there by Gio. They've been moving the ball nicely. Only one drop here on this little sequence uh, of, of plays. And just trying to get the bones uh, warmed up, the muscles warmed up here uh, in these full pads once again. This is Carlos Rubel along with Mike Gonzalez, just uh, bringing you here live coverage of West Local East Wildcat uh, football practice. We'll be at West Local High School tomorrow uh, during their, they'll have a, they actually have a purple white scrimmage, so we'll be doing the same thing with them. We still have, who we go? It's still Vasquez, yeah, Ramsey in there. So earlier there was a throw, it wasn't Ramsey, it was Josh Gonzalez uh, that was thrown to him. Worry number, worry number two on the far side. Just want to make sure we got all the players uh, here identified. So here's Vasquez once again, spread formation. Deep down the field, good coverage there. And the catch, it looked like it was made and dropped. Russell Garza out there, good attempt. And a good size there on that running back for the Wildcats. And you talked about throwing a little bit further down the field. That one, uh, you know what, about a good 15 yard down the field. Yeah, Ramsey Vasquez was, was uh, looking for Russell Garza there. He liked the matchup there. It was just man on man. Russell had a few steps on him, uh, but the pass was uh, incomplete. But yeah, it's just something that uh, they're, they're working on right now. It'll come. It takes a little time. You notice, Carlos, uh, no offensive line there. You see a coach, uh, quarterback's coach Mike Brown is the one that's snapping the ball to Vasquez. We got good audio down on the field. If we do have good audio down on the field, then we will uh, kind of listen in a little bit uh, more as to see what the coaches are saying. And they know that we're live out here, so uh, you never know, they might throw in a trick play here just to show the opponents or something different just to show the opponents and throw them off a little bit. Here we go, Vasquez caught Guerra once again. And there you see the connection. You've seen a lot of the seven on seven, a lot of Vasquez to Guerra. And that's kind of, you know, I think we're coaches at this part of the year and if you have that first game you're going to go you're going to kind of get a pick up with what you had last year you know Vasquez, Guerra, Carrasco, you know Gonzalez those are the ones that carried the load 
for the Wildcats into the playoffs last year. Right. So that's why you're seeing a lot of that here in practice. Then as the season continues, he'll start to work in some of the younger guys. Yeah, early on though, yes, uh, expect the Wildcat fans expect uh, that connection there, Vasquez, to, uh, to Guerra early on in the year. But you see Guerra there showing his, uh, his, his good, solid speed there. Uh, one, you know, he's the kind of player that can uh, break one uh, if he has the open field. Gonzalez, nice catch. Good throw right there as well. And well, that's a touchdown for the Wildcats on the 7 7. So Coach Burgett will take that as a victory against, hey, his longtime friend, longtime defensive coordinator, Coach Guzman, on the other side. Of course, they're not hitting full pads right, right now, but you have to like the connection once again out of the backfield to Josh Gonzalez and uh, able to punch it in for the TD. Yeah, uh, Vasquez probably had only like, what, two incompletions there in that drive there. And again, it wasn't anything fancy, just going to his backs there. And uh, he threw to about four or five different guys in that drive there. And uh, Gonzalez was able to, um, to finish it off there. And uh, I saw when, when Gonzalez scored, I saw Coach Brigitte take a few steps, a few hops there of excitement there. So I think uh, he likes uh, what he's seen um, in the early part of practice. Let's see who they come out at quarterback here now. As uh, and Vasquez is still going to be out there. We'll take a look on the camera. And that's number three here for the Wildcats. Is that Edward Villalobos? Is that Edward? Edward uh, is a six foot, 200 pounds. He looks like a six footer there. And nice Mike, catch I'm more, I'm more to than the sure that, yeah, I think that is Edward's. That is uh, Edward Villalobos. Big, taller quarterback uh, for the Wildcats. Good zip on the ball as he passed it down the field. Let's try to listen in a little bit on this uh, particular play and see what's going on. That's what I'm talking about, split the difference between each other. Ready, ready, set, go. There you go. Another good catch there by the Wildcats. Are they moving the ball down the field? Hey, it's been a good sequence for them. If you're Coach Burgett, you got to be happy. Now, you talk a little bit about um, what they did over the summer. They had two hours a week to work with. And I'm hearing, you know, from all these football players that, hey, that really helped. We went through all our plays. We went through, you know, Coach Burgett talked about the stands, you know, just the little things that they were able to work on and uh, toss the ball around because before during the summer people are asking well what was it like last year well last year you couldn't have the football out there you couldn't do football workouts it had to all be conditioning but now they were able to throw the football here uh during the summer and they look like they practice all summer long yeah no doubt about that and i mean i think uh the coaches all around are very happy with this new rule uh, they're able to kind of get things going a little bit during the summer so that when practice begins they're already ahead of the game and so I think the coaching staff uh, feels really, really good um, kind of getting the season going a little bit here. And more than anything, Carlos, I think it benefits uh, players like Ramsey Vasquez and players like uh, Edward Villalobos that hope to get some playing time at quarterback. Uh, they're able to work on those mechanics, on those, the throwing motions and things like that in that two-week period. And so this is where they hope it pays off. Okay, here we go once again, spread off it. You got five wide receivers this time. That one thrown to the outside and one of the, what, there's only been two drops so far uh, during these drills, 707 drills have been taking place for the West Coast Wildcats. Let's talk a little bit about the East schedule because uh, they have moved uh, along from the 31, or from the 32-6A to the 31-6A. Okay, and so in the 32-6A, it was, it was tough because you had the, the Brownsville School or you had Anna, and then you had Los Fresnos, you had the two Harlington schools, you had San Benito, then you had West Coast High. You know, so that was a really brutal district schedule. It kind of flipped here for West Coast because if you take a look at their schedule, they have Mater, a uh, team with, loaded with D1 players. They're gonna be, that game will take place at Buck Stadium on a Saturday. Then they're going to be at Laredo Alexander, a playoff team from a year ago. In fact, they played against West Coast. There's Ramsey Vasquez on the tackle, by the way. Then they're playing at Hannah and Harlington. So the first four non-district games, my potential uh, playoff team already for the Wildcats. So it's, it's, you know, they go from the meat grinder district schedule to the meat grinder non-district schedule. Yeah, no doubt about that, Carlos. And I think uh, you said something that was very important here. All four of these programs made the playoffs last year. 
And uh, that's, that's the kind of schedule that the coaching staff and Coach Burgett um, likes to put together for, for the Wildcats because they feel like, hey, you know, our program is one of the best in South Texas. We feel like we can play against the best and we want to prepare for district. And, um, and it, you know, it really, plays off, it really pays off when you play in district. And I mean, again, you talked about uh, Maynard. That's a team that went uh, to the area round last year. And, and as you mentioned, that's divi had Division I players. And Laredo Alexander, I mean, we saw a few years ago the Wildcats to defeat Laredo Alexander in the playoff game. But Alexander came back and made the playoffs last year. And then you have Brownsville Hanna. And that was a team, Carlos, that was just a few plays away or even one play away from going into the fourth round last year. Had that magical run last year last year and uh, bring back uh, some quality players this year. And then Harlingen, I mean, you can't go wrong with scheduling Harlingen for a non-district game. I mean, that's probably the, the one school that has the most tradition in the real Granny Valley, especially at the 6A level. And uh, that's a team that uh, goes to the playoffs year in, year out. And uh, we're in the bi-district round last year. And uh, the Wildcats ha have actually had success against the Cardinals uh, winning the last two games. As far as the district schedule is concerned, that, that you know, you, you really never know from one year to the next. Uh, but as far as the preseason predictions are concerned, it looks like you know the Panthers, Vela Sabercats, uh, and and Edinburgh High School are going to be and West Lacoise are your top four teams. So when they move to the district schedule, uh, the tough games, it's going to be those three teams right there. I'm talking West Laco High. Almost a pick right there for the West Laco East Wildcat defense. But West Laco High and, and Vela and Edinburgh, those are going to be the three tough games on the district side. On paper, those are the teams that are expected to once again uh, be right there uh, in the playoff hunt, according to Dave Campbell Magazine. And those are the four programs, Carlos, that made the playoffs last year. And once again, uh, that's who our favorite. Again, if you notice the, the schedule, Carlos, it starts with at Donna North, Edinburgh High. Uh, high school. That was a game that the Wildcats won 21 to nothing last year. And then you got at Edinburgh North and Economides on October 25th. And last year, Carlos, uh, Westlake OE started District 4-0 and uh, pretty much, uh, oh, oh wow, what a great catch that was. Great concentration, kept his feet in bounds for that young man and a good pass down the field as well. Yeah, great, great job there, great uh, catch and great camera work there. But uh, yeah, Carlos, uh, the Wildcats started District 4-0 last year. Yeah, and that was uh, Ed that was Edward Villalobos in that sequence. And I wanted to give him the credit because, Mike, uh, and we'll get back to the schedule, Just he's just throwing the ball really nicely through that touchdown pass and great zip on the ball. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Carlos, <laughs> notice the, the spiral in that ball. And that was something Coach Burgett actually told me last week about uh, this young man. Uh, that uh, he's, he's, he's expected to get some playing time, Carlos. And I mean, we mentioned, we mentioned about Ramsey Vasquez. Uh, he hopes to have him at least 50% of the time at quarterback. And so this kid, if he can come in and, and perform at a solid level, um, man, then that, that would make the job easier for Vasquez, I think, and for the coaching staff, maybe giving Edwards more snaps at quarterback. But yeah, going back to the district schedule, Carlos, uh, I think the key for the Wildcats last year was getting that uh, early start and going 4-0. They actually outscored their opponents, so 162-12 to against those opponents. And so they took care of business, basically, as far as doing what, what it took to make the playoffs before they finished the year at West Laco and Tinaco Bowl and uh, Edinburgh Vela, the two okay. powers. All right, we'll get a chance to see Villalobos once again throwing the ball down the field. Good catch. And is that Cardoza? That's one of the big fullbacks. Uh, Looks like coming out of the backfield or maybe lined up there in a slot position. Good catch by him as Edward Villalobos once again. Um, might be the starting quarterback, might be Ramsey Vasquez and even a newcomer. We'll talk about the quarterbacks here in a little bit. Right now, let's talk about the East offensive line. The East offensive line is uh, loaded. I mean, it seems like every year, West Lacoes has these players that come up, you know, from the JV levels, from the junior high levels. Some, uh, some pretty big boys, but not only are they big, but they're also very athletic when they're on the football field. Mario Trevino, 5'11", 230. He'll be coming back. He'll be playing a little bit of tight end. I heard he's also playing a little bit of defensive end. Even at one time, they were even uh, contemplated putting him at fullback. Uh, but Trevino, great catch by Vasquez. Uh, but Mario Trevino will be uh, one of the most important offensive linemen or tight end for West Lacoes, Steely Munoz. Uh, he has 6'1", 265 is Steely. Uh, he will be also very important to the West Laco East Wildcats. And Pedro Posada, if you watch this kid play, 6'2", 310 pounds. And he's the type of player that is very, very athletic. 
uh, big boy, but he also moves very well with his feet. No, no doubt about that, Carlos. Those three, those three players you named, Carlos, they have the potential to be in the all district team, first team, uh, if, if they're able to perform at a high level, and uh, we know that they can. I mean, it, and it starts with uh, Pedro Posada, as you mentioned, 6'2", 3'10", there. You see a, a great catch, a great job there. Um, Pedro, left, he's supposed to play the left guard position, only a junior, as you mentioned, great size, very physical. And then Steely Munoz, 6'1", 265, you can't beat that. He's going to play the left tackle position, a senior, two-year starter, good size, strong young man. And then Mario Trevino, and uh, what a player to have, Carlos, because uh, we... He missed all of last year, or he actually he only played one game last year, which was a playoff game. I had an unfortunate uh, back injury and missed uh, missed most of the year. And he'll make the transition from center to tight end. Uh, we saw him play tight end. Uh, his sophomore, you see a throw there to Ramsey Vasquez. He is inbounds and scores a touchdown. Great throw and great catch there. That's a nice little co combination right there, Carlos, with a. Uh, Edward Villalobos and uh, Ramsey Vasquez, Vasquez going if he can line up at tight end and you saw the separation he had on the DB there. Yeah and a big catch earlier by uh, Gio Guerra that was made to get the ball deep into this area. I, you got to believe also coach Guzman has to be a little frustrated because you can't hit right now. You can't go full speed and knock these guys to the ground and and maybe get a little bit more physical. That'll come on. That'll come later on during the practice. Okay well earlier uh, this week we had some reporters including Juanita Maldonado uh, doing some interviews. Mike Gonzalez is also uh, out here and we talked a little bit to the offensive line, so let's listen to that interview now. So, Pedro, we are here with you today. We're practicing, so you've had a couple of practices already. What are some things you have seen that you've liked so far? Um, we're really coming together as a team. The offense really clicking since we like practiced in the summer all summer long. And we've been like ahead of the game since like the other years. We've been better like coming into the season. You mentioned the offense clicking. How important is this for the, throughout the season? Well, it's very important because, you know, we got new quarterbacks like Ramsey, Edwards subbing in, like going in for each other. And the whole line, we got like three returning and like new people are in there, but we're all work, putting in work. So all click together. Usually the Wildcats are known for their quarterbacks this season, starting from scratch with a new quarterback. How do you think this will affect the team? Well, I'm very confident in like Ramsey and Edward getting the job done. They're both doing their hell of a players. Doing really, really good this season right now. So, Steely, you are part of the offensive line. You have one of the most difficult tasks on the team. What can we expect to see from the offensive line this season? Uh, a lot of dominance, a lot of push, a lot of power, a lot of speed, a lot of um, experience coming back from me, Pedro, JP. Um, we got Mario coming back. He didn't get to play a lot last year. Um, but, yeah, a lot of dominance and, and going with it. You mentioned experience coming back on the offensive side. How do you think this will benefit the Wildcats? Oh, a lot. Um, you know, with Ramsey, Randy, Josh, um, we got Hector going both ways too. Um, you know, it's just a lot of, you know, um, knowing what to do, a lot of football IQ and just being able to go off what we learned from last year and the years before that. You want to play some defense too. Why? And talk about that. Yes, sir. I'm just trying to help the team where I can. You know, wherever they need me, I'll be there regardless of the position. And how are you going to help the team out on defense? I mean, my understanding is you're going to play defensive events. So why do you feel like uh, your skills will help the unit? I feel just the just the leadership on the D-line. You know, we have Leo, we have Isai, they're great guys. You know, we have Brando in there, and I feel I could get into the mix, you know, just with the fast-paced offenses and see how that works out. All right, back on the campus of West Laco East High School, where a 7-on-7 seven -seven continues here, and our, our coverage for KOS continues of the West Laco East Wildcats has still got what Edward Villalobos at quarterback, throwing the ball, zipping it down the field nicely. And uh, as he rolls to his right hand side on that particular play, the cloud with the cloud cover, we got a little bit of cloud cover, we got the sun peeking in, peeking out. But so far, a good practice. You've got to believe uh, for Coach Burgett, if this was a game situation, I think he'd be happy the way his offense is running. Yeah, I know that about that, Carlos. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed uh, early on with Ever Edward Villalobos, uh, the way he's, uh, he's throwing that football. He's getting it uh, down the field to his receivers, doing a great job uh, doing his reads. And, and what I like, Carlos, is that he's looking at all the receivers. He's not just looking at one and then throwing it. He's kind of, you see there rolling to his right there, looking at his man there. And look at that spiral there, perfect. Great catch there. And great you got to believe also Coach Burgett, you know, uh, before uh, Lefevre came in here, before Richard was, was a quarterback, he was hesitant to throw the ball. I don't know, I don't want to say he was hesitant, but his bread and butter, you know, what he would go to what was a safety blanket. Hey, that was the running game. But I think now that because of Lefevre, 
you know, he opened up the game a little bit more and maybe he has a little bit more confidence in that passing game. It seems like it anyway. And he should be because Villalobos is throwing the ball down the field. And then when, and this one's going to go deep down the field, man open, but the coverage is there. Yeah, able to come right back uh, with some good coverage on the defensive side of the ball. So Guzman, the defensive coordinator, has to be happy with that. He actually wanted him to bring the ball down for the interception. But Coach Burgett, once again, has to be more confident in that passing game because he had someone like Lefevre, uh, you know, who did such a good job. Yeah, and you notice the separation there, and the receiver was able to get by his man, but the safety was able to come there and uh, break that play up. But uh, Edward there, uh, if you saw there, kind of pumped, fake pump there, and then went to the, to the deep ball. But, yeah, I mean, I think Coach Burgett right now is taking a good look at Edward to see uh, what he has as far as... Uh, now this is the second rotation uh, for Villalobos. We had Va uh, Vasquez out there. Vasquez got a lot of playing time last year at quarterback, uh, but now it's been uh, Villalobos here in this rotation, and, and it looks like they're bringing in some uh, new personnel. But let's talk a little bit about 316A and some of the players from 316A. For those of you guys that are watching at home, we're just talking about outside of West Laco ISD because we're going to focus a lot on West Laco East today. We'll focus also on West Laco High School tomorrow. But as far as 316A players to watch uh, in the district, uh, you got AJ Sotelo, who is your Villa quarterback. He was a newcomer of the year from a year ago, and he'll be back for his junior year. He was just a sophomore for the Villa Sabercats. Then you have Tyler Bailey. Uh, Vela, offensive lineman. He was first team all district. He's a D1 player, big boy, and uh, he's already committed to TCU. So whenever you have someone on the offensive line and they're going to play D1, you know he's got to be one of your studs coming back. Emmanuel Duran from Edinburgh. He's a defensive newcomer there. He was a defensive tackle who had 42 tackles and three sacks. He, they say he can move on that offensive line, you know, for his size. Uh, that he moves very, very quickly. He's over 200 pounds, maybe 220, 230. And when you get 42 tackles at defensive line, that means it's very hard to run up the middle. And then we have Juan Mendoza, a Villa safety. He was first team all district. Adrian Garza from Edinburgh, wide receiver. So the defensive backs for West Wicca East and West Wicca High School will have to look out for him. He was first team all district. And then Justin Gantu from Villa, a wide receiver. And he was also first team all district. And, and if you take a look at that list, Mike, a lot of players from Edinburgh Villa. And that's why they're picked to win this district once again. I mean, when you have players like Tyler Bailey, who is a D1 prospect back for his senior year, 6'4", 280. And as you mentioned, committed to TCU. He's also gotten offers from Houston, LSU, Missouri, and, and North Texas. So, I mean, there are schools out there, big time schools going after him and does a great job. He, the way he seals the blocks, the way he pancakes, uh, I had a chance to see him on video a little bit and, is, and does a solid job as uh, in pass protection it usually lines up on the right side he'll play either right tackle he'll play about he'll play about 90 percent right tackle and does play some guard too on those uh, jumbo um, packages there and then you have a uh, sotelo off a strong sophomore year 510 165. uh what impressed me about him carlos is his touchdown interception ratio 25 touchdowns to five interceptions as a sophomore i mean that's that's rock solid right there and then you mentioned emmanuel duran 42 tackles and three sacks. Stands at 5'11", 230, but runs a 4'9 speed, which is rock solid for a defensive lineman there. And uh, he'll play the nose tackle position. And then Ivan Mendoza uh, had 47 tackles, two interceptions, runs a 4'6 speed, is very athletic, is also a member of the basketball team there. And then you have uh, Adrian Garza, who is, stands at 5'11", very versatile, can play quarterback, receiver, running back. Uh, I know on video I saw him uh, run a few jet sweeps uh, and he did he does have experience at quarterback he started two games last year runs a 4-6 speed so he's got speed out there and then Justin Cantu from Edinburgh Vela I mean not only does he have good size Carlos at 6-2 he runs a 4-5 speed comes off a rock solid season last year with 40 receptions of about 500 yards four touchdowns he can run uh, crossing patterns he can run slants he can go deep and I mean he I mean, that's when you have a receiver like that with good size and speed, I mean, you're able to go with him with any package. All right, so the Wildcats, once again, still passing the ball, football uh, around a little bit. We are uh, continuing our coverage at West Laquise High School uh, preseason. Summer workouts, two-a-days, whatever you want to call it. Not really two-a-days for, for West Laquise. They practice, they have these long practices that take place in the morning, and they get to, they get to finish with their workouts uh, in the afternoon after lifting some weights. Uh, for the Wildcats. It used to be in the day you come in, you worked out for two hours, and you come back in the afternoon, you work out for another two hours. So that's uh, 
Those were two a days. Um, if you take a look at practice, you've, you've seen Gio Guerra get the ball a lot. You see he has great hands, you see his quickness and his speed, and you can't miss the guy because he's got that long hair as well. And just taking a look at you know people that are kind of under the radar, you know, you hear a lot about Ramsey Vasquez. We just talked about AJ Sotelo and Tyler Bailey and these other players at 31 6 8. I say look out for, for Gio Guerra. Uh, I put him down as the X factor in 31 6 8 because uh, he has ran for six, 656 yards last year, and it seemed like every time he touched the ball, he was electrifying on the field. Yeah, no doubt about that. I mean, he, made, he makes good things happen when he touches the ball there. He uh, looks to carry the load this year because uh, of the graduation of uh, Delgado last mm -hmm. year. And, uh, but uh, this guy came in and had a rock solid sophomore year. He's, uh, he runs hard, he's, uh, he's quick, he reads the defense very, very well. And I mean, when you have a back like that with that offensive line, that's a, a very nice weapon to have. All right, so we did uh, get a chance to talk to Gio Guerra. Earlier this week, Juanita Maldonado was out at practice, and uh, here's what Gio Guerra had to say. Hello, everyone. I'm Juanita Maldonado, and today I'm here with Gio Guerra, part of the Wildcat football program. Gio, so let's see. Last year, you averaged a total of 656 yards. What can we expect from you this year? Um, hopefully, good things, you know. Uh, but um, I'm kind of, you know, counting on my line to to get me through the season, you know, just. Looking forward to the O-line doing great. You're one of the returning players. Does this add more pressure on you? How does it feel for you? Just another day in the office, really. You know, don't think, I try not to think of it too much. Just go out there and play. All right, continuing our coverage right here, West La Cuis Wildcat uh, football practice taking place. Saw a little bit of uh, Edward Villalobos throw the football around. We're gonna try to find uh, Coach Burgett out here on the football field and see what he has to say about the West Lacoeus Wildcats because uh, looks like Mike, they look good on that little seven on seven. We'll get his reaction and see how he feels about everything. It looks like now they have uh, some new players in there running the offense. And we're gonna have to uh, go to the other side of the field here to talk to coach uh, Burgett. But talk a little bit more about Gio Guerra sophomore last year just a junior so you know he might be their go-to running back next year Mike and, and Carlos he's actually a three-year letterman was a part of the team as a freshman and comes off a sophomore year where he rushed for 656 yards four touchdowns and a very strong young man very determined okay so we're here down in the field uh, coach Mike Burgett yesterday was his birthday happy birthday coach uh, I know you're not celebrating it was quick because you have football how do you feel about that seven on seven we're talking about how uh, how good Edward Villalobos looked at quarterback uh, Edward uh, he's had about three impressive days in a row uh, you know and plus it gives Ramsey a break from playing defense and Ramsey as you can see uh, on the touchdown throw Ramsey's one of probably the best receivers in the valley so uh, it gives us a lot more options. Edwards uh, put in a lot of time at West Coast, and I think he'll be ready to play this year. And what about Gio Guetta, coach? I mean, he's off a rock solid sophomore year, comes in, and I mean, it looks like he hasn't missed a B, looks really good out there. Oh, that, I'm gonna tell you. Go ahead, coach. Gio, Gio is something else. Uh, you wanna talk about a special kid. He's fun to be around, first of all. He's very coachable. He's 100 miles per hour no matter what he does. He's 100. 65, 60 pounds, and he hits the hole hard, hard. So he doesn't have a big year. Healthy, huge. I know that uh, the defense on the defense side of the ball, Coach Guzman had the number one ranked defense in the Rio Grande Valley last year, and your offense just sliced right through them. But there's a caveat to that. No hitting today, is that right? No hitting. That, you know what? When the defense can't hit, the offense relaxes a little bit. You know, we got some great defensive players out there. Uh, Jordan, the name you guys are going to hear quite a bit. He's going to be a junior. He's going to replace Fred. Now, you heard you heard me saying this. Fred was something else. This kid's going to be, he's probably a little bit faster than Fred. He's uh, Phil Corners coming back that played quite a bit, but both our safeties are back. Hector's not here today. He had an emergency, but we feel pretty good on defense. All right. Thank you very much, Coach. We'll go ahead and let you go for right now. And uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, the new quarterback for 2019 and who that person uh, will be, Mike, because uh, over the past uh, few years, uh, really had a luxury because he had Lefevre, who is now at Incarnate Word as a uh, D1 player. He was quarterback for three years. He came in here as a sophomore. 
uh, played for those three years, and then last year they had Antonio Cedeno. So uh, break it down, you know, Villalobos, Ramsey Vasquez, uh, you know, who do you think is going to be quarterback, or what are you hearing? Well, I mean, for now, I think Ramsey Vasquez uh, will get uh, a bulk of the, of the snaps there, but uh, based on what we've seen here today with Edward Villalobos, I think uh, Coach uh, Burgett uh, is very happy with uh, what he's seen, and I mean, if he can continue his progress there, I mean, he would like to see maybe a 50-50 ratio between Edward Villalobos and uh, Ramsey Vasquez. And, uh, you know, he t when I asked him about the, the quarterback situation, one of the things he told me, he goes, it depends who we play. He goes, it depends on the opponent and what kind of defense they has. I mean, because why? Because, I mean, perhaps they can take advantage of certain matchups using Ramsey Vasquez as quarterback. I mean, as mentioned, I mean, he's a dual threat. He can hurt you with his arm or with his legs. And, I mean, he did a lot of that last year. And then you have... Um, you can have Edward Villalobos, who's a looks like a pure skilled quarterback. There has very good size, and you can use him more in the pocket. And maybe you can use Ramsey Vasquez as a possible receiver or um, or a back in, in some of those packages there. And another name he gave me was a, a young man named Ashton Guajardo, who stands at six foot one, one sixty five. We may see him out here today. Very athletic. Said he's very very special. He can chunk the ball, but more than likely he'll probably stay with the JV club this year. So, I mean, by the looks of it, unless something happens, but by the looks of it, Carlos, so we're going to have uh, Ramsey Vasquez as uh, your starting quarterback, and uh, Edward Villalobos should um, get a lot of snaps this year. So, and the, the great thing about that, Carlos, is that you can use a lot of packages now and give de the defense different looks. And so that, that only means that the, your opponent's going to have to study that much more film. Right. We we had an opportunity to talk a little bit about the uh, offensive line uh, earlier earlier today. And uh, right now they're going through some drills. We might go out there here in a little bit and see what they're doing. Uh, but right now we continue on with this 7-on-7. Um, seven seven. Got uh, Gio Guerra looking good. As far as the standouts for this practice, you got to say, you know, Ramsey Vasquez, Gio Guerra, and, and Edward Villalobos have all looked really, really good out here on this practice. Of course, it's just uh, not a lot of hitting that's going on today. And that's going to be an interception. I know the guy's in a white jersey, but that's actually an interception. They tries to squeeze it in there uh, to Gio Guerra. So the uh, defense has to be happy about that uh, interception right there, right at the goal line. But um, Villalobos, uh, Vasquez, and, and Guerra have all looked good uh, in this practice. It's controlled uh, seven on seven. And even Josh Gonzalez. Josh Gonzalez uh, has looked rock solid uh in this practice so far. And uh, another great thing about the offense, Carlos, is the depth they're going to have in the fullback position. I mean, you got Randy Cardosa, you got Jacob Carrasco. Uh, they'll probably have Russell Garza in there in some packages. And I mean, overall, Carlos, in the backfield, you're going to have about five guys that are going to be three-year lettermen. And I mean, that a lot of experience there. These are players that have been in playoff games as well. And I mean, that's that's a nice benefit for Coach Burgett to have. And I mean, you, you look at a guy like Randy Cardosa, who was first team all district as a fullback, Jacob Carrasco, Russell Garza. And um, one of the things Coach Burgett told me, he goes, hey, you know, with their size, it's like having two extra linemen back there. And then you, if you have that, you throw in that kind of package with a player like Josh Gonzalez, um, Gio Guerra. That's a nice package to have. All right, let's take a look at the, the defense now because the players on the defensive side of the ball, number one defense at the Royal Grand Valley from a year ago and uh, lost some players. They actually have five players back that are on defense. Some of the key players on the defensive side of the ball, you got Hector Muniz at safety. I remember an interception uh, back for a touchdown against one of the Edinburgh schools, a fantastic run for him. He's electrifying on the defensive side of the ball. Mario Trevino, we talked about him on the offensive side of the ball. He'll be key on the defensive side of the ball as well. Then you have Ramsey Vasquez, uh, electrifying type of player as well is Ramsey Vasquez. Once he gets his hands on the ball, whether it's at safety position or on the offensive side of the ball, he does fantastic things. And then you talked about Jordan Velasquez. Coach Burgett talked a little bit about him. They're trying to replace, you know, Freddy Cardenas, who is a stud athlete uh, for the Wildcats all those years on the defensive side of the ball. He says that Jordan Velasquez at linebacker will also be very good. Okay, so earlier this week, Juanita Maldonado had an opportunity to talk to Hector Muniz, who is one of the up and coming players. Let's take a look at that interview now. I am here with Hector Muniz. Hector, last season you led the defense with 35 tackles and one interception. What can we expect to see from you this season? Uh, the same work that I did last year, hard work and dedication to defense. 
defense actually is one of the most important parts of the Wildcats. What have you been seeing from the defense side so far? Hustle. Hustle and hard work. You are actually going to be playing both sides of the ball. Coach Forget mentioned that it takes a very dedicated player with strength and conditioning to be able to do this. How much pressure does this put on you, if any? Uh, zero pressure. You know, I'm, I'm here practicing every day. So, I mean, whatever I could help the team with, I'm, I'm there for it. And lastly, what are the goals for you and for the team this season? Go win and know first. All right, so there you go, Hector Muniz, one of the players that uh, Coach Guzman will be relying on. Coach Guzman, you got to remember, he's been here since day one. Uh, came over here with Armando Coya to open up the school and uh, was eventually promoted to defensive coordinator. And Coach Guzman has just done a fantastic job with this defense year in and year out. He always finds a couple of players that stand out above the rest. Hey, exactly, Carlos. I mean, he's been here since the beginning, set the foundation. And uh, what that says, Carlos, is that He's worked with these kids, probably a lot of them he met when they were in middle school. So, you know, he, he's able to get a good idea of what, uh, what he's going to get and how he can use them. And I mean, it just seems like year in and year out when they lose key players, they're able to fill them in at the right spots. They have strengths on one side and then weaknesses another and able to uh, correct them as the season goes along and has done a wonderful job. Always has one of the top defenses in the Valley. Okay, so now what you're seeing here is a little bit of the offensive line going up against the defensive line. And uh, let's take a look at some of the action that's uh, going on right now. And you get to see, I believe this is, uh, look like Pedro Osada. Oh, it's going to be actually the action on the other side of the field. So one of the guards going up against uh, one of the defensive linemen. So now that you're in full pads, you get to have a little bit more uh, activity, be a little bit more physical. And I believe is that Josh, is that one of our... Uh, might Josh be. Pedraza, it looks like he's one of our defensive guys. You know, the, all these, these coaches are all covered up, so it's yeah. kind of hard to see him, but uh, Coach Pedraza, they're co coaching up one of his players. All right, let's take a look. Let's see what's going on once again. I believe this is Steely Munoz, who's there at the left tackle, wearing number 70. Pedro Posada at uh, guard. And there you go. There's Munoz, got a little inside move. So you got to give the win right there to the defensive guy. Because he goes up there quick, to, and, and waiting for Steely to give him a hit, but he a little swim move to the inside, and uh, so give the victory right there to the defensive player. And you know what, Carlos? So we mentioned about the offensive line earlier with Mario, Steely, and Pedro. They also have other prospects there. They have about four guys that are going to be over six foot, close to 300 pounds there. Watch out for Jesus Lozano at right tackle, who's a state qualifier in wrestling. And then you got uh, another guy named J.D. Martinez, who's who's going to play the right guard position, who's also in wrestling. And uh, Robert Torres stands at six foot two forty five. Ruben Torres, who stands at six foot two forty five, and uh, another guy to keep an eye on is Pablo Ibanez, who's a uh, six foot two thirty. So they have big, strong uh, players there that just you know take that east side, strong side uh, saying or however you want to call it. And the, motto, the motto, the mantra, and just the mantra, and just kind of carry that tradition of having a big, strong offensive line. So we saw a little bit of seven on seven, so now we're getting to see a little bit of five on five. And so these are the offensive line going up against the defensive line. And usually they have the ones versus the ones and the twos versus the twos uh, at this point of practice. And um, very interesting to see this aspect of the game. You really don't get this close up coverage. You know, when we're doing the broadcast of the games, we're always talking about the skilled players. But you know, the boys up front, they have always uh, done a good job for West Lacuis. If you take a look at some of the players that they've had in the past, um, at West Lacuis that have gone on the next, Carlos Cuellar uh, being one of them, Donald Moore, another uh, football player, Frank Hinez. You know, these are uh, players that were just outstanding uh, on the offensive side of the ball um, as far as the O-line is concerned. Right, Kat Salazar was another young man that played with uh, Carlos Cuellar. I mean, they just had a lot of men coming. I remember the late, two th late 2000s into this decade where they began their run of winning district championships and going three deep in the playoffs. I mean, a lot of it had to do because of the offensive line. Uh, we're talking about players that that were powerlifting champions and as a team were actually state powerlifting champions and it carries into football. And great, it pays great. Off. Uh, you know, that's some great action to see right there. You see how the coaches get so pumped up right there as you go one on one, the offensive line versus the defensive line, and uh, coaches get pumped up. That gets them excited. You know, this is like, you know, we talk about putting on the pads is another level. 
So at this level right here, then next week, you got the scrimmages. So let's talk about the scrimmages who are gonna be uh, taking place next uh, week. And that's when you get to go live. You're going live, you're going full speed. So this is kind of a little step in that direction that you'll see right here down on the field. You don't see a lot of tackling that's taking place, you know, with the skills. But the O-line, you know, they, they kind of, they've been hitting the pads for the past four days. So this is the fifth day of practice. You know, now you're going up against someone else uh, and they're in full pads as well. So this is good action to see and this gets them ready for that first game. So check that out. Look at the Posadas right there. Just driving them out. There's no way you're going to get near a quarterback when you got an offensive line like that. Just a, a junior is Posada. Uh, started as a sophomore last year. Did an excellent job on that. And the cool thing about that, Carlos, that was a great shot by Don Ramirez. The cool thing about that is that they, they keep going until the whistle is blowing. I mean, they went back for five to 10 yards there, went to the ground. And I mean, that's what it's all about. That's football right there. So the scrimmages that'll be taking place will be at San Benito. That'll take place next Friday, August 16th at seven o'clock. You know, the Wildcats don't catch a break, even on the scrimmages, taking the, the taking on the Greyhounds, and the Greyhounds predicted to win district this year in, in 32-6A. They're just reloading over there, lost a couple of key players, but uh, they'll be back once again as one of the top teams in 32-6A. And then Friday, August 23rd, the week before football season begins. They'll be here at home, as it says 6 o'clock, at uh, West Laco High School, taking on Ed Cachelsa and uh, another scrimmage right there. But also, folks, you know, these times can always change. It always happens. These scrimmages are not uh, set in stone, so anything can happen as you continue to watch the drills right here in front of you, uh, one-on-ones, O-line versus D-line. Uh, so those, ch those scrimmages could always change. So we're giving you the times and the dates right now, but you know, talk to your kids at home, uh, you know, watch for social media in case there's any type of changes. Yeah, exactly, Carlos. So you, you talk about San Benito, a team that's gone to the playoffs, uh, what, five, six years, have made deep runs, and then you have a tradition against that Kyle Chelsea. Had a tough year last year, but uh, are a little upset right now, and they hope to get things going over there in the La Maquina Maria. All right, let's see if we can talk to uh, Coach Guzmán. Coach Guzman, we're here live on social media. Coach Rene Guzman, how are you doing, Coach? First of all, we wanted to just talk to you. Tell us a little bit about the one-on-one -on -one that's going on right now, and how's the defense looking against the offense? Uh, right now, we're doing pretty good, man. I mean, it, it's... Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to be biased, but yeah, it looks pretty even right now. And it's, like I said, it's the first day of contact that we can make the one-on-one uh, -on -one contact. So it, it's, it's something that we need to see, and we need to keep on seeing as the season progresses, no, obviously. No Freddie Cardenas. This year, I know he was all over the field for you last year, but you got some players that are coming up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, yeah, you know what, Freddie was Freddie was an all-state linebacker for us, and he was a three-year starter. And for the most part, yeah, we're gonna miss him, but we got some pretty good guys that are gonna fill his shoes right away, and we're looking for good things for them, and we'll have them for a couple of years. So. Growing yep. pains, but we'll Absolutely. be all right. Heck, we'll be all right. Good back there. Yes, sir. Mike, Mike, Coach, I got to ask you, I wonder how that conversation started with Mario Chivino. Did he go up to you guys and <laughs> ask, I want to play defense? Did you guys ask him? I mean, because we all know what kind of uh, athleticism he has. He's yes. great on the offensive yes. line. And now he's going to play defense. Yes. So tell us, how, fill us in on that. Uh, you know what, Mario's one of those kind of kids that, that can play both sides of the ball because of his excellent, uh, his drive. You know, it's one of those, he's that type of kid that can play both ways. and. And right off the bat, his, his footwork is just phenomenal. I mean, he lost some weight, and, and I think it makes him even uh, a better candidate to play both sides of the ball. And just the way his ball get off is, it's excellent. It's excellent. So if anybody can do it, I think Mario can. And as far as he's been, he's been telling, he's been telling me to uh, coach. I want to play defense because he was a freshman. But you know, Mario's a, a team player. Obviously, can go where he's needed. And we're just looking at it, at it. We'll look at it during the scrimmage, see how he does, and, and we'll go from there. And uh, you go what I, what I, what you gotta like about him helping you guys out on defense is his leadership. Yes, yes. By far, Mar is one of our captains, and without that goes without saying. You know, he, he does everything right, and a lot of kids look up to him, and, and he knows that. And he's 14 always, so that's good. That's good in his part. All right, coach. We'll go ahead and let you go. We're standing here in the middle of the end zone, and they're uh, throwing the ball around. Thank you, coach. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you, Coach. Coach uh, Rene Guzman, longtime defensive coordinator here uh, at West La Coise. Got a little insight right there on what's going on with the defense. As we are about to wrap things up here, I uh, just wanted to thank all the K West crew uh, who's out there. You got Vinny, Vinny Berry on the uh, camera up top, and everybody else, the other cameramen that are here. Who else we got? We got Don Ramirez, we got Val Samora also on the camera. 
Joe Leal running the audio here today, Darlene Gracia, who is running the graphics and does a fantastic job, the graphic artist for West Coise, and also like to thank uh, Mike Palacios, who is uh, directing the show here today. So it's been just a, a great job by uh, everyone in the coverage, and we're going to continue on with our coverage that'll take place uh, tomorrow at West Local High School. They're going to have their scrimmage that'll be uh, taking place, Mike. So we'll be out at West Local High School. We'll continue with our scrimmage coverage as well. Sam Menino and then Ed Couchelsa. Look on the uh, Facebook page and on social media for uh, the highlights of those games. Um, Mike, how, how, what do you think about the Wildcats? You know, if there were any question marks, you know, I think they were answered here today. Absolutely. I think the coaches uh, got what they what they wanted to see from their players. You see the effort, you see the hustle. You, I mean, on defense, uh, they were physical out there. I mean, they thought they did a great job. I think the coaches are happy on both sides of the ball now. It's about moving forward into the scrimmages. All right, well, for Mike Gonzalez, I'm Carlos Roberto. We will see you guys next time right here on KWIS.